Canterbury Earthquake Series, particularly the 22nd of February 2011 event, highlighted a number of issues with building design that required attention to provide more resilient new structures and to retrofit existing structures for better performance in future earthquake events. Timber framed houses perform pretty well in the earthquakes in Christchurch, but those that were located on liquefied ground didn't perform so well. Often their foundations were not stiff or strong enough to resist the earthquake events and the uneven deformations occurred beneath them. This meant that the damage to the dwelling was quite significant and often the house could not be occupied immediately after the event because it was too damaged and the weather tightness had been lost. In the seismic learnings feature in issue 164 of Build, we look at changes made to the way we build buildings to make them more resilient. After February 2011, MB got off the mark quickly, amending its citation of NZS 3604 timber frame buildings to exclude soil that might liquefy or spread laterally in the definition of good ground for the Canterbury earthquake region, because standard NZS 3604 foundations would not be sufficient in many instances. It also developed a guidance document for repairing and rebuilding houses in the Canterbury earthquake region. This could be used by the industry without the need to provide specific designs for every house, speeding up the administrative processes at the local authorities. The document concentrated mainly on the house foundations because foundation failure was the major cause of the damage. Indicator criteria were developed to help engineers and builders decide whether a damaged foundation could potentially be re-leveled or whether it would have to be rebuilt. Generic designs were prepared for new foundations to suit the expected performance of the site in any future major earthquake. These were based on a site technical classification or zones established by geotechnical engineers across the region. An emphasis was placed on ensuring that the foundations were stiff and strong enough to smooth the effects of uneven ground deformations resulting from a future major earthquake. They were also detailed to allow them to be more easily re-leveled following such an event. A range of methods for re-leveling deformed foundations was also produced. It has proved more difficult to transfer the site technical classification system for liquefaction potential used in Canterbury to other parts of the country. This is because in Christchurch the geotechnical engineers were fortunate enough to have actual land behaviour to help them to develop the classifications. A Royal Commission of Inquiry held following the earthquakes covered a very wide range of issues. Particular consideration was given to the performance of large buildings. Recommendations were made by the Commission on new research to improve the seismic loading standard and the reinforced concrete design standard. Additions have been made to the loading standard to ensure that the ledge supports for stair flights and ramps in buildings will have sufficient length to prevent collapse of the stair or ramp during an earthquake. Amendments have also been made to the parts and components section of the earthquake loading standard to remove ambiguities in interpretation. Research has been conducted at Auckland and Canterbury universities to improve the behaviour of reinforced concrete shear walls following the observations of poor performance in Christchurch. The 2015 Kaikoura earthquake highlighted issues with a lack of restraint of non-structural components in Wellington buildings that otherwise were structurally undamaged. This is an area where increased focus is expected in the future to improve the resilience of buildings. The effects of beam elongation in Statistics House during the 2015 Kaikoura earthquake have also resulted in further changes to the concrete design standard. These are incorporated in Amendment 3 to the standard. Other articles in this issue include new technologies being employed in new building design, a description of the correct application of the parts and components section of the earthquake loading standard for suspended ceilings, and MB's response to the observed behaviour of Statistics House in Wellington. So once again, you should read Build 164 for more articles on how to improve the building resilience of our structures.